Hello class. Uh, in this video I wanted to just show something for fun. I think this could be very useful but something I just uh, did outside of assignments and things and that is this pine tree that you see up on screen uh, here and so as you might know from either listening to me in class or following me on YouTube or other things I like to draw um, architectural renderings, which is what I do, and I like to move away from photoreal uh, many times and sort of make the drawing speak to the architecture through the style that you're using. And a part of that is just using a lot of Illustrator to draw pieces that might either be uh, completed in Illustrator or even migrate ultimately to Photoshop for a photo merge or, or some, some other piece of software like this. And so I like the control of Illustrator that you can really draw things the way you want to and then make them easy to repeat and easy to change. And in the past I've developed uh, a deciduous tree that can be different sizes, different fullnesses, different colors and all this. And I have those videos up there. In fact, I might even post this tree, this pine tree, in that channel. So if you just want to, or that playlist, so you can go up and see those videos. Um, and, and there I sort of break down each step independently, I believe. But here I'm just going to show you how to do this pine tree in one video, no matter how long it takes. Um, again, this tree is really not meant to replace, it's not meant to be, I look like exactly like a real pine tree. If you want a real pine tree, you have lots of options. Go to the internet and download a photograph. Uh, Photoshop also has a pretty good tree generators within it. Or other software that you might be using to, to render uh, might also have options for you in there. And if you want a realistic one, sure, go ahead and do that. This is meant to be semi-unrealistic and be able to be adjusted as needed to match the drawing that I might be working on and sort of give it interest. Um, as well as be easy to use, right? Because uh, as an architect, you have to make money. So I also try to, it might take me some time to, to develop these trees and these other elements that you see throughout YouTube. It took me some time the first time around, but once they're done, they're meant to be boom, boom, move really easy, make drawing uh, go more quickly, and ultimately highlight the architecture as needed. Uh, so let me get into this setup of the trees. I have actually two things here you can see on screen. This is, this is the tree, obviously, here. Uh, this black smile, if you will, crescent shape. That's actually the original object. That is what this shape is, although I've applied various filters and techniques and, and, and appearances and this and that to this tree. Um, and, that, and you can see that if I click over here, hopefully again on YouTube, you can see this light blue line. That's that same smile here. That is here. This is the same thing. And I'll show you, I'll go step by step to show how I came up with that. Um, again, this was meant to be so I can draw this easily or I can copy this easily and edit it. Everything is done pre with presets in Illustrator uh, so that it comes out well. Um, of course, as I show you all these presets, uh, anytime that there's a color or that there's a filter used, the exact settings, they're up to you. They really will change based on the drawing you're doing. They will change based on the size of the drawing. All those things are factors uh, in your decision making. But the basic steps should generally remain the same. So let me select this guy here. And actually, I did cheat slightly because this object has no black in it. I did add a fill um, to this just to show it very cleanly what the shape is. And if you're not familiar, I just opened up my appearance toolbar. And it's, I think, the most um, beneficial thing to know in Illustrator because you can add multiple fills, as you can see I've done here. And I'll go over those. And you can add effects at various locations, either at the end, the beginning, or each individual fill and stroke. And that's how you take a simple shape like this crescent and turn it into something like that, is by becoming very familiar with the appearances uh, tool palette and how to adjust all of those things. So. To start, I'm really going to turn this off. I could actually delete this, so you don't need that black crescent shape. But really, the first thing I did when making this tree is I made a fill. And I did start with black or a dark green color originally to just draw this, this simple uh, crescent shape. And if you want to see what it is, you can see there's four points. There's a point here on each corner, and then on the top and bottom, of course, they have you know curved handles on them. So can maybe see those there being pulled across. So I just made, you know, again, I just drew it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but a, a basic shape like this. Um, and then you're drawing. And you can see what I already have applied on this one. While it could be black, what I did is I found a picture of a pine tree, and I just brought it in and used it as a swatch, just to give it that little texture of needles so you can sort of see up in there. Uh, and I'll talk about the fact that there's 
with transparency and whatnot on it here in, in a second. Um, but go ahead and do that. If you don't know how to do that, look up another video on how to bring in, use a photograph as a swatch. Uh, it's in my other tree videos. It's also, I'm sure, in many places on YouTube. So I actually, once I, once I had that fill, or, you know, I added a second fill beneath it, right? And so we can see this is what it looks like sort of naturally like this. And if you don't know how to add a fill, I just, you just select a fill, hit this post-it note button, you add it, it'll have a duplicate of the two. And then, um, the, on the lower one, change it to gradient. So, you know, it's over here, you know, go set your gradient there. And... Uh, under your gradient, I just picked, I'm not even sure exactly what R RGB or CMYK values I use, but you can take a look here. Again, that's going to really depend on you, your drawing, and everything, but you can see the numbers there if you want to use it on the light side. And here are the numbers for the dark side. If you want to pause it, you can, you can take a look at that. And then I just did the gradient tool at a slight angle from left to right just so it would look bright on one side and dark on the other as if the light were coming from one side or another. Again, you're drawing depending on how your shadows are going. You can change the orientation of that gradient to change which side is highlighted and which side is not highlighted. Um, so I, I set that gradient. Um, where's my appearances? Let me pull this back up. So I had essentially have these two fills set up. Now what I ended up doing um, is I did add some opacity to uh, this top one. So if I if I take off for a second, I go to normal and uh, just change. As you can see, that's the original photograph that I used as a texture in this case. But I but it doesn't have the highlighting on it. So I put it on top. I added the the slight transparency to it so that you would see the gradient below it that I had. And uh, I did use luminosity as well, which ever so slightly br makes the brights a little bit brighter just to enhance that aspect a little bit on it. So again, that was all under opacity, right under this fill only. So I, so this opacity does not affect this fill or anything else. That's unlike if you went to the transparency and opacity tools over here, it would affect the whole thing. So under appearances, I just hit this little arrow and I could change the opacity lum luminosity in 65 percent there. I can close that back up. I didn't change the opacity uh, or anything on that original gradient. It is just as is. And then from there what I started to do is I started to add these effects. Now you can add these effects in generally whichever order you want to do them in. I obviously went back and forth when I originally drew it and made lots of changes here and there uh, and so on and so forth. But So I'm going to jump around I think to, to show these just to um, give a sense of what they are because their order matters in terms of rendering but not necessarily in terms of my thought process. So I am going to sort of jump around here or there a bit. I started with a technique that I use in a lot of videos which is the double roughen technique. All right, And so a double roughen allows you to get sort of organic shape feels to it. So if I turn on one of these roughens, let's see why did not go there. Let me, uh, yeah okay there we go. If I turn on the bottom one first, what we can see is it takes this simple um, arc and it makes it still an arc, but it sort of gets these little wiggles and little waves. So there's sort of the big movements and the big changes in the in what will be the branches. But obviously a a uh, a tree also has little ones. It's sort of like a fractal, right? There's there's uh, there's a shape that happens at the large scale and a shape that happens at the small scale. I find for trees and many other things, clouds and, and other other such things, that having two roughens, one for big curves and one for small, really starts to get an organic feel. So when both are turned on, you start to get what amounts to just one bow, if you will, of uh, of this tree. And again, you can see if I if I turn that one on, it does it has no effect. If I turn that one on, it looks like that. It's really the two together that are working with each other set up like that that make this work. So again, I'm going to show you the two settings. I usually start with the big one first. So if I if I just hit this one, uh, you can see the numbers here. And I'm using relative and 5% and 1. I definitely am using smooth. Now the issue using relative, again, that's going to change based on the size of your tree. So, uh, so depending on how big your tree is, these numbers could vary. The big thing is when you see your curviness here, you just don't, you just want to, you want it to look sort of like this, a little lumpy, but not, uh, not too spiky. So I'll do that. And then if I turn on the second roughen, 
you can see again here are the numbers again using relative those numbers might change based on what you're doing but what you want to see is lots of little ups and downs around here as you're going across so those are the two roughens and um, the one thing that I uh, wanted to do then is I also used scribble on top of all this and so what scribble does as you can see it just takes all the shape and it makes it in fact if I just maybe you know, temporarily turn off the rough and so you can see it's just making these squiggly lines and what that ended up doing for this tree it, it was really about the edges here like swoop here and down in and a swoop here and a swoop here and a swoop here because if you look at a pine tree it varies as like, like one little piece comes out then it comes away and a little piece comes out and a little comes away in and so scribble allowed me to sort of get the edges of what the tree might look like fairly simply so if I turn back on the two rough ends you can see it sort of fills in the bow and has spaces and has, has these little points and things and if, if I turn on scribble you can get the numbers here again you can see I basically turned it off all the way to the right uh, I set some path overlaps a little bit of variation in these curviness and the spacing and this is just making a little random of uh, you know a very thin line weight again you can play with all of these settings d depending on what you're really trying to go for but I think that was really key to sort of making the bottom bow sort of look correct and so essentially at this point I have identical to this bottom piece here well, Actually, there's there's one other thing I did at the end of this uh, process that I'll show. So that was sort of stacked up straight down like that. Now the question is, how do I get this um, shape to sort of go up and turn into a pine tree? And I did all of that with this transform tool here. So if I turn this on, you'll see, boom, it goes goes all the way up. It's not. It almost looks finished. There is one step after this, but I want to show you this. Uh, here because that is the biggest move here that really turns this into the shape of the pine tree and so if I open up the transform tool you can see the the uh, uh, most important things are is that I have copies and in this case I did six you could do more or less depending on what you needed to do um, and what I did is I moved each piece up and I shrunk each piece horizontally so it's, mo it's copying so step one is copies it up it makes it smaller horizontally and it move and it moves it up. So it put the second one is sort of just the repeat of that bow here, and it does it six times. And as it sort of does these transformations, it pulls in and transforms all of these things in that manner. And so you 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 end up with this. And so you can you can see the settings. The settings are up for changes, but it it should get you pretty close there. At this point, you can see it's pretty close to this. What I did, and I, and I, I might have been able to do a few things uh, differently. One is if I wasn't quite happy with the shape of the tree, I could come back and adjust the original crescent shape a little bit. But uh, I actually did it another way um, to give myself slightly more control. And also a benefit is I think it added a little bit more randomness into it. And what I did here is over the top of everything, I used the warp filter. And that, that's up here. So when I click on this warp filter, we'll see that this tree does now indeed become this exact same tree. And um, um, that was just to sort of pull pull down and pull out the tree, just to give it a little bit more of what I felt was a more of a pine tree, like in an, a little easier way. So I was able to put it on and just play with the slider to get this shape. And because this shape is being applied, it really does matter that this pl is, is applied at the beginning of the process, so it warps the whole shape before transforming it all to uh, sort of give it a little bit more life and, and realistic look to it and a little more dynamic to it and so that's that's how you make the tree now of course the benefit as I said is this tree can be used in uh, uh, different ways and can be edited fairly easy so uh, this is pretty new tree I've, pre I've developed this fairly recently so I haven't done I haven't used it a lot but one of the things that I have done is if I were to just duplicate the tree I'm just copying it with my arrow and I just push it slightly up for example it makes the tree much more full uh, you know, fuller, a bigger tree. So again, that depends on the rendering. If I want a more sketchy, skinnier trees, I can I can sort of do that shape. Um, other things I can do is, of course, I can just easily copy it, which is which is the key, and and put it over the top. If I want to change any of the settings slightly to get slight shape changes, you know, maybe I can go to an 11 there, and it just slightly changes it to to pull it up just a little bit. I can go to scribble and maybe slightly change some of this stuff as well to start start to get slightly different shapes uh, I might you know even try I haven't actually done this I'm gonna try for the first time going seven I'm gonna do a preview on this guy because it's gonna be taller 
um, and so I might need to oops wrong way there you know just play with these things here play with these things here oh. you can bend it a little bit separate it out a little bit yeah, there we go that's what I was trying to do make a nice little stubby tree like that uh, say okay and just quickly chain these things change these settings to get a second tree that is within a few seconds looks different looks in style to this but different so one of the things you know if you, you use uh, you know trees you get from online they look identical right and that's that's an issue you can come back in here and you can play with the colors of the gradient if you want to to sort of pull out um, Sometimes I like to go to uh, HSB if I'm just making minor changes with my gradients. There we go. Um, to produce a second tree that sort of goes in and uh, starts to fill in the scene pretty pretty quite easily and, and stylistically. So there's lots of things you can do with that. Again, I can make variations of trees super quickly now, set them into the background of a drawing, of, of a piece of architecture and have something that's really unique uh, you know clients are happy with people who see it love and, and all those things so I hope you enjoy it again I think the big lessons is you know experimenting with how to draw an illustrator you can move away from photorealism you can uh, you know, use the appearance tool palette to really do amazing things with simple shapes, and it's a great way to draw. So have fun with that. I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you want to uh, look at other videos, go ahead and look at other videos, and good luck in all your drawings.